Why don't we take a few minutes and learn about how we can work with dictionaries inside of Python. It's not that much more complex or different really than working with lists. They're both iterables or collections of values. But of course, dictionaries do have some additional functionality, some additional features, and working with those can be somewhat unintuitive at first. So it makes sense to kind of walk through and look at what we're talking about. Now to begin with, at a basic level, yeah, you can iterate through dictionaries the same way that you iterate through lists using a for loop. There's a really important uh, condition here. And that is that when you use the for loop, you're really only iterating through the dictionary keys. And this is important, right? When you use your for loop, you're getting your keys only, which means you need to then use that key in order to look up the value, if that's actually what you want, within each iteration of your loop. We'll take a look at how that works in just a moment. You can also use the in operator with your dictionaries to check for the existence of a key. So a lot of the sort of basic operations, the basic things that you can do with a dictionary, apply to the keys and not the values. You can get back a list of keys with the dot keys function, and I'll show you how that works. And I'm gonna put an asterisk here next to the list because it's not actually a list, but with a little bit of work, it can be a list. Same thing for values. If we want all the values out, we can get this list asterisk of values, or we can even get a list of items, which comes back as a list of lists. And what do I mean there? Well, each item will come back as a list with the key and then the value. And then we'll have a comma there and another item with the key and the value. And all of that is inside of a list as well. So we've got zero, one here, zero, one here, zero, one, right? This big complicated nested list of lists. It can be a little bit confusing the first time you think about it, but we'll work through it a little bit. And I think it'll make more sense after we do that. So let's bring up our Visual Studio code. And I will begin with by just doing the for loop. We'll say for item in student grades, right? Print out item. So what is this going to get? And you might think that it's going to somehow get both the key and the value for each item. Remember, student grades has three items, Ben, Diane, and Sam, with each of those three values. But really what's going to happen is it's going to return each of the keys. So when I run Python dictionary.py, you can see there my last uh, three values that are printed out is Ben, Diane, and Sam, which is just the keys for my dictionary. So that is how I can iterate through the keys. If the values are what I wanted to actually iterate through, well, that's easy enough to do. I would simply say student grades bang item like that. Now it's going to get each item out of student grades and print out those. Uh, did I save that? Yep, and I'll give it a run. Now I get the values out, 92, 97, and 81. So at a basic level, that's how you can iterate through your items inside of a dictionary. Uh, you iterate through the keys and then you use the key to look up each value. Recall that dictionaries are really not meant to be ordered lists that you can step through step by step. So typically, whenever you wanna get a value out of a dictionary, you gotta use the key to look it up. That's the whole point of a dictionary, so that's how we're doing it. Some other interesting things here. Let's uh, comment out this so it's not clogging up my output. I mentioned we can use the in operator. So I can say if, uh, how about Ben in student grades, print it is. All right, so is that gonna work? Yeah, that is gonna work because Ben is a key inside of student grades. You can see it right there. This would not necessarily work for the value. So if I say if 92 in student grades, it didn't print out it is uh, because 92 is located in the value of student grade. It's located right there as one of the values, but 92 is not located in the keys and the in command is checking the keys. But fear not, we have some different things that we could do. For instance, we could say if 92 is in student grades dot values. Now values, like I said, is going to print or rather is going to get out a list of the values instead of student grades and 92 is one of those. So when I run this little bit of code here, oops, the values with an S. When I run this little code here, I see 92 is found inside of the values because values is returning that list. But interestingly, it's not technically a list in the way that I've used list in the past. It's actually something called a dictionary list. And we can see that if we say print student grades dot values. Let's just print out this function that applies to the student grades. And what we see here is initially it kind of looks like a list, right? I've got a, well, I've got my square brackets with each of my three values inside of it. But notice this dictionary values uh, sort of modifi oops, modifier that's on the outside of it. We don't have an actual list. We have a dictionary values list, which is something slightly different. So we can't treat this as a list, even if we wanted to. So for example, if I said values equals student grades dot values. I could not print out values one, right? Normally I would be able to do exactly this command with a list. If student grades dot values returned a list, 
then values here would contain a list and I could reference it by index using this command here. But when I try to run this, what I get in response is dictionary values object is not subscriptable because values is not a list, it's a dictionary values list. It's a special type of list. However, we can fix it, we can change it, we can force it to be a list. You may recall way back when in our videos when we talked about variable data types, we talked about casting and the ability to convert a variable from one data type to another. For instance, we could convert a string into an integer using the function int. Well, the function list works exactly the same way. Assuming I have something that can be converted into a list, this won't work on everything, but it will work on a dictionary values list. I wrap it up in list. Actually, let's do this. Let's say values list equals list values. And then I can print out values list one like this. Now this is going to get the second item in my values list, which I believe will be 97. Let's give it a run, see what happens. There it is, the very last thing that printed out you can see is 97. Why did we get 97? Well, we took all the values out of student grades, which were 92, 97, and 81, I think, and we put them inside of values into something known as a dictionary list. We then used the list function to convert that, that whole list of values, into just a plain list. And that's what's inside of values list. We could then reference a specific item by its ordinal position. Position number one contains the value 97, hence we get 97 printed out. So by using that little command there, the list cast function to convert our values into a list, we can now treat the dictionary values just like a list. And believe it or not, we can do the exact same thing with our keys. So here I'll just print out all the keys at the end. But you can see that when it gets to the bottom, oops, not keys, but rather keys list. So the initial keys variable is still equal to the dictionary keys data type. But the keys list, if we print that out, we can see here is just a list of values, a list of the three keys inside of our dictionary. What this means is that we can combine all of this together to do some interesting things. For example, let's say we wanted to iterate through using a numeric iterator the index of our dictionaries. Well, we can actually do that. It just takes a little bit of work to do. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a variable i and we're going to loop through the range of zero to the length of values. The length of values is going to be three. So zero to three is going to be our range. That means we'll go zero, one, two, and then be done. We use those zero, one, two inside of our keys list, list array with the student grades. Is That is going to return each one of these is going to return an actual key value, and that key value will in turn be used on the original dictionary in order to get our actual value value out. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit complicated, but if for some reason you do actually want to iterate through that number, iterate through that iterator, this is a way that you could do that. We'll save this and give it a run, and there it is, 92, 97, 81. So it printed out each of those values inside of my, uh, inside of my output, by using the keys list and the values lists and converting them from a dictionary values into a list value. Again, obviously very complicated, but just an example of how powerful and how flexible these structures can be depending on what you need to do or what you want to do inside of your code. Now, if we want to get maybe a little bit simpler, uh, something that we can do is use the items, which returns a list of lists like I talked about. So let's say items equals student grades dot items, open and close parenthesis. And I'll print items just to start so you can see what it looks like here when we print it out. Uh, notice first of all that again, it's not actually a list. It's one of these things called a dictionary of items, which is a dictionary list. But inside of that, we've got brackets. And inside of those brackets, we have curly parentheses. And we have one, two, and three. So if I convert the items into a list, and I will do that by saying, items list equals list items. And now I've got my items list as a list. For instance, I could print items zero. Do you have any idea what this is going to print out? Do you have a guess about what this is going to print out? Save that and give it a run. Whoops. I always keep forgetting to add on list there. All right, try that again. Save that, give it a run. Yeah, it printed out the very first item inside of my list. And the first item is this list of items. It's Ben comma 92. It's the first dictionary item, but it's no longer curly braces. Notice the curly braces are gone and replaced with 
curvy parentheses brackets because it's another list inside of there. In fact, I could say list item zero, comma zero, and that's just gonna print out the key, Ben. When I get this out, I get Ben. If I look at number one here, I should get the value of Ben. I'll save that and run it. Yeah, there it is, 92. So items list is this whole list right here. Let's take a look at this again. And the first item I get is item zero, that's Ben comma 92. Then inside of that, I get the first index or the second item, which is the number 92. And that's what prints out there, the number 92. So a slightly easier way using the items property in order to get a list of lists of your items. This can help you gain access to your dictionary items using ordinal positional with a little bit more simplicity. Uh, but again, it's really not the way that a dictionary is meant to be used. Here's your takeaway. Use dictionaries when you are translating data in from JSON or XML or when you otherwise want to name the keys yourself. When you want to have controls over the keys and look up items specifically by those keys as opposed to iterating them through one by one, a dictionary is the right choice. You'll use a list when you don't care about the key values, you don't care about what it is named, you only care about the values and getting them in order. A list is going to be an easier and frankly more efficient choice. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.